I think that every garden deserves a wildlife pond. And for years I've had a wildlife pond in my allotment. And having it there drew lots of wildlife, all types of insects, frogs, birds, and that actually helped to create more balance in my vegetable garden there. So it was definitely on the agenda to build at least one pond here in the new home garden. And I've just completed that. Josh and I have just completed that. There's gonna be a larger one that we hope to build later on this year, but this is the start. And I wanna show you a little bit as to how I built it, how Josh and I dug it out, and how it's going to fit into the garden here. And then hopefully it can help you to build a wildlife pond in your own garden. last video I shared with you some plans that I have for this area here in front of the polycrub. We built the polycrub last year that was the main focus with this area at the back of the house but now that that's in and productive I want to create more growing space and more enjoyable space for us to come out and just enjoy the garden. It's really just a stone's throw from the kitchen door and so this is a great place for potentially growing herbs, for growing lettuces even, that you could just nip out and, and harvest on the go, but also a nice seating area, which is where I'm sitting right now. And Josh and I last summer spent quite a bit of time here just at the end of a long day, just coming out here, sitting and enjoying being outside. Now, that is the reason, or one of the reasons why I wanted to put a little pond here because not only does it increase biodiversity, it supports local wildlife, but it's just really enjoyable to come out here, sit, and then look at a water feature. And creating a small pond is really not that difficult, but you do need to put in a bit of time and effort and have the right materials. Let's have a look at the finished product before I go into how we put this together. It is about the size of a bathtub. And if you look inside, there's a, a shallow end here and I've put some stones in there. They're sitting on fabric. And then it goes up to this edge here, which is the area where water can spill out, but also animals can get in and out of. That's really important for a wildlife pond. And then down here, there's a much deeper area and the sun's come out so you can see that bubbling thing right there. That is a solar powered oxygenator. So it pumps air into the water here and that helps to keep the pond from going stagnant, which is really important if you want life to survive in there, good life like frogs and, and even fish, if you wanted to have fish in your pond, but it also helps to keep the water from going stagnant. And that's important if you want to avoid midges and mosquitoes. The very first step of building this pond was working out the size of it and where we wanted to place it. Now you can see the area around here a little bit better and we need a walkway here to get around to the back side or the front side of the polycrub. Obviously it needs space here for the bench and we also wanted to keep the pond a good distance away from the wall here so that it doesn't really press against it and um, affect its integrity. So what I did was I took some ordinary flour from the kitchen and I sprinkled out an approximate area, a rectangular area that fitted the contour of this corner and that ended with the edge of the corner there because there'll be another walkway going down into this area. And if you want to learn a little bit more about my plans for this entire area over here as well, then watch my previous video, The Garden in February. Once I had that outline here ready, then it was the hardest work of the job and that was digging the hole out. Having an area that is just a little bit deeper will help frogs and other animals that are living in your pond to swim down 
and to hide from predators. And eventually there will be aquatic plants in here as well so that they can hide among them as well. Now once we had the hole dug out and we did choose to have vertical sides on our pond because it is a very small pond and we wanted that depth. Once we had all that soil out, we packed all the soil down and we removed anything that was sharp or that stuck out and that could potentially puncture the liner that was going to go in. So we dug out the hole, we packed it all down and then the next step was putting down a pond underlay. The underlay you put down so that it protects the liner from being punctured and it doesn't degrade in the soil, it lasts a long time. And then once that was down, we put the liner on top, which is a really heavy duty plastic and it will last decades. I'm trying to push this liner down so that it doesn't pull in too much from the sides, but also a lot of these folds, you won't be able to see them once the pond is filled, but I just want the folds to be in inconspicuous places. Once the liner was in, time to fill it with water, just ordinary tap water here. And then after 24 hours of allowing the water to sit inside, then it's time to trim the liner and tuck it in. Now the reason that you wait that full day, at least before trimming the edge of the liner, is that the water will pull the liner down. So if you haven't tucked it into every single little crevice that is going to be in the pond, the weight of the water will pull that liner down and allow it to settle over that time period, so a day. And then afterwards, you just trim the edges around the pond, and I left about a 12 inch margin, and that way there is a good weed suppressant barrier around the edges and also you can tuck it in or just put stones or slates or roofing tiles or, or whatever on top to hold it down. I've mainly used recycled materials to make this pond and so the stones around the edge they were here at the house already so the quartz stones, the terracotta pipes over here they were also just left here at the house when we bought it. And then these are old roofing slates and they make perfect edging here for the pond. These over here, I've just put in this morning, it occurred to me overnight that these old kind of top braces or top slates for roofs, which again were left here at the house, they would be great for disguising the plastic liner of the pond. The other aspect of having these stones and the slates and everything around the edge of the pond is that they too create little areas, so little habitats for frogs to go and hide inside for worms and other animals. Let's have a closer look at some of these habitat features. Now, we've just looked at underneath this particular roofing tile. So all along the edge there, there's going to be habitat for quite small creatures. And then down under here, you can see that there's a gap between these roofing tiles and the plastic liner. So creatures can get in there, they can get in under there, they can get into the, the pipe there. So there's lots and lots of spaces. And then over time, as the plants that I've planted around the edge start growing there's even more cover and shade there and I'll likely also add more stones and more habitat as I come across them in the garden and there's Portia making a, an appearance in the background so there's plenty of spaces around the edges now inside the pond we have some stones and the pond liner is plastic so it will get punctured by anything sharp so you can see I've put some underlay underneath all of these stones. But again, there's going to be places, little cracks and crevices underneath the stones for wildlife and also along the sides. And they'll also provide a bit of shade. One thing that I hear a lot of people 
have misgivings about when it comes to ponds of any size is the idea that they will just become a breeding ground for mosquitoes and midges and other biting insects. That will only ever be a problem if your pond water becomes stagnant. So filled with aquatic plants and algae, low oxygen levels, and water that isn't moving. And for that reason, I have added this particular feature to the pond. It costs about 50 pounds. It is a solar powered oxygenator. It has these little stone bubbles at the end of tubes. And when the sun is out and it gets full sun, it pushes air through these tubes out through these little round stones and into the water so there's lots of bubbles and in my old pond at the allotment i had a solar powered fountain and that did pretty much the same job but the problem with that is that it often got gunked up with all different types of aquatic life like little snails also algae it just stopped working at times now with this there's no way for those creatures and those bits of plant matter to get sucked up in because it blows out only. And because it's solar powered, I don't have to worry too much about powering it or thinking about it too much. Now, right now it only works when there's full sun directly on the face of that little bitty solar panel. But in the summer, apparently if there's excess sunlight, it charges a battery, which is inside this unit here and then that can continue to power it when it's cloudy or overcast like right now. In addition to building the pond, I've also planted some plants that I already had around the edges. This is a sedum and you can see that it creates flower stalks. It is a pollinator friendly plant for late summer, early autumn. Over here, it doesn't look like much, but this is a lady's mantle. And when I was planting it, I did see some new leaves it's definitely alive under there somewhere and this will actually grow quite large and take up this entire area over here I can't quite find them but they're definitely there somewhere and then over here on the far side there is a miniature raspberry just there it's called raspberry yummy and I have it in a pot as well and then I thought We've got a wall there, we've got the pond here. Why not put some mint in there? It may actually move that way and take up a bit more of the space, but this is my favorite type of mint. It's called strawberry mint, and it really does smell like strawberries. And so if it does take over a bit, no problem. I do love it. Now inside the pond, there are some plants already as well. If you look closely, you'll see that there is a square plant pot down there at the very bottom. This is a type of a water lily, and it is apparently all right for small ponds, but I think it might be a little bit too much for this pond. And so I'm just putting it there. I bought it on impulse, and it will probably end up in the larger pond that we're going to build. Now over here, Jody from the Ramsey Garden Center, where I got the the uh, water lily, she happened to have some plants from her own pond that she gave me. I have no idea what they're called, but there are a couple of different types in here. That one here, and this one here. And so I've popped them in and I'm just gonna watch to see what they do. I've got my sleeve a little bit wet from fishing around in the pond. It took a good few days to get it installed and no doubt there, there will be some tweaks to it, especially when it comes to the stones around but it's already transforming this really barren and unused area of the garden. And this is the first part of transforming this area back here in front of the polycrub. And more of that will happen towards the end of March when my raised beds arrive. And they are a type of metal raised bed that look beautiful. And it's going to be an area where I continue to grow herbs for the kitchen, herbs for skincare, and other plants for soap making, and just having a little bit of extra growing space out here for convenient crops.
I hope that you like my little pond. Let me know what you think of it though. If there's anything that you think could be a little bit better or what you would do a bit differently. And if you have a wildlife pond, let me know as well. And as far as the plants that are inside, I have no idea what varieties they are. So if you know, leave a comment down below with the names of the plants and let me know what to expect with them as well. Thank you so much for watching. And if you do want to check out another video on ponds, head over and watch my original video that I made years ago for the allotment pond. And that again shows how to build a pond on a slope. See you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.